enjoy the show. Play on my tang. But how you been? Pretty good, man. How's the uh, con well, coming along? Uh, it's it's still rolling. Um, it's uh, um, November, November 18th and 19th down in Dover. Ooh. Okay. So, you know, but uh, the first one up is uh, Jerks Production. Um, there's a Scares for Cares at Tattooed Moms on South Street. So uh, I got two pieces for uh, them for like an auction for charity. Awesome. Awesome. Scares for cares. Yeah. That is, that is probably one of the best. Probably one of the, <laughs> probably one of the best names. You know, a good name really hits, especially yes, when you're yes. looking at an event. Um, <laughs> any reoccurring uh, cons that you're looking at, like end of the year? I know you're usually down in that, New Jersey. November, November, yeah, November is that uh, Blue Hen, mm -hmm. and then December is uh ocean city comic-con at the convention center down there um that one is uh december 9th okay yeah i know you, you usually hit up ocean city in december i know that's when that one is um yeah because that's you know i mean you, you hit you hitting the con circuit especially with all the new artwork oh my god Come on, this new one you sent me is still my wallpaper, man. Dude, it is it is it is ink and splatter, please. Look. It's good. It reminds me of the, the, it, it 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 almost ex is like ripped exactly out of my mind from the Queese planet exploding. Right. Like well, that's, that's exactly the whole exactly what they would see on the screen is oh my god, it's all right. fucking gone. It's gone. We're there. You got people crying. You got people sad. You got people holding loved ones. And then you just, you see them just, you know, the ship just continue on into space. You know, yeah. it's just like, you can't do anything about it. You know, it's that whole. The ultimate symbolism of life is what I saw that as is. Yeah, it's gone. gone. Guess what? Yeah. You're still going forward. And you got to look yeah, there. Exactly. You got to look for yeah. it. And that's really a kind yeah. of, I would say, a, a key sneak peek as to what I wrote in the future of that. But Forward, absolutely. Infinity. Beyond. <laughs> infinity and beyond, big brother. <laughs> but ultimately, man, I really love that, that shot. It's so good. And I mean, I would get All that. that I get the that framed. All I can see is the flaws. That's because so. you're an artist, okay? That's just like you, you told me to stop touching Chronicles of the Hunted. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and I, <laughs> I, I took this time. I was like, look, overall, I knew I wanted more dialogue in the third arc, but I kept mm -hmm. going through the first and second arc. Like, Oh my God, this is, it's not, it's not readable. So I took a go. I went through everything's readable. I'm happy with overall that story. I'm not, I think I can do better, but that's why <laughs> I turned my focus over to a new project, which I told you about, which I'm, there actually, you go. I'm really excited. We're just going to say, we're going to just do uh, storyboards or just uh, rough images to get everything uh, rolling. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll just sit down and just bang yeah. it out because it's there. Yeah. Is that else? Is that Overall, I'm excited about that portion yeah. because the, mm -hmm. the written story, my idea, I know I have it written so that you can go through and kind of have your own take on it. And then that's where the real creative uh, expedition, I would say, into this journey uh, begins. But overall, I mean, you mentioned the film strip going through your mind of the idea. So ultimately... That's how my kind of mind works when I'm writing. Hola, Katarina. Um, Hi. We're, What's uh, up? This will probably be end credits. Uh, but we were talking about essentially Caribe the Hunted. We started off with Frank's cons mm -hmm. and where he's going to be. Um, and then with uh, Caribe, I got to write the annual, which is called Chronicles of the Hunted. And I told him I, I had to be overall happy with the 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 three arcs. I wasn't happy with the the lack of dialogue I had in the third arc. But my problem was that in my editing process, I couldn't get past the first two arcs. And I was just like, this, I, I, it, it, you, you can't read this unless you're me. So I had to 
I had to make it readable. Um, and especially the amount of books that I've listened to and, and read and, and written different things from now since the time I, I wrote that originally. Um, I'm happy with it, but I think I can do better. And I started writing. Um, the name kind of, it says it all for me, which I titled this piece. It's my next writing project, and it's called The Unofic- uh, the Unofficial Stories of Bill Yams. And there's uh, the Bill Yams, which I'm pretty sure I've mentioned on the podcast before, was my nickname when I went to uh, ATC for automotive collision repair. Um, my nickname was Bill Yams. And it stuck. Like, there's still people I met, and this is what inspired me to start writing this story because when you work in the automotive dealership life, there's a certain point in your tenure there, you're like, somebody should be recording this. So that's overall my first thought of the idea and then adding in my own flair to it. But it is my journey through automotive world and I'm starting to write it. The reason why I did is because one of my friends from ATC Wishy, he's an, he's an insurance adjuster now. Met him because I'm working the auto collision business. And, you know, the legend of Bill Yams continues. And that's what really inspired me to write this piece. And it's writing what you know and expanding what you learned. And ultimately, doing what Frank told me. Just goddamn write it. Which is the best piece of writing advice you need. I hope so. Well, literally, that's how Stephen King essentially started his book on writing. He was like, I don't know what I need to tell you besides you just need to write it. And then he goes through, and it, it's a really good, really, really good book. And that was another thing that inspired me too. But um, overall, that's where I've been, man. I'm just hopping in the lab with a pen and a pad, just kind of writing my own little story over here. And then Katarina's a woman about the a woman about the states, <laughs> hopping over to the good old mile high state of Colorado for a con. How the fuck was that? This is apparently the beginning of the podcast at some point. I'll figure Um, it out later in post. First of all, I have never been asked if I'm from sea level so often in my freaking life. Ah! I I was there. Ah! I was like, what does that even mean? Like, I know what it means, but I have never, that is not something we ask people yeah. when they're in our state, like if they're in Connecticut yeah. and they're struggling with like well, your car humidity or whatever, you're not, not like, you. are you, are you one of those high altitude people? Like never, never in my life. Are you from Peru? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, are you sea level? I was like, oh. uh, what? <laughs> one of the sea level people are here. I mean, I can, uh. I can see the sea. But, so I guess, yes. But overall, wow. how 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 fun was it? How you know any in- moments that kind of stuck out in your mind from the con? Well, first um, and foremost, what I do for the convention is not um, celebrity heavy. Mm-hmm. I'm the volunteer coordinator, so I do the staffing, onboarding the volunteers, assigning them, greeting them, having them check in and check out with me. Um, and then walk the floor, make sure that everybody's happy where they are, that they're, you know, that they're working and helping to cover their breaks, things like that. I do get to meet some of the um, celebrities and stuff, but that's never been a huge deal for me. Uh, I love making yeah. connections with the volunteers themselves and um, the mm-hmm. other staff members have become my family. And in that sense, I have the time of my life whenever I do these shows while also being fucking exhausted. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that the comes end of with it. the territory. Yeah. And with um, seven shows this year that we have to, you know, create the applications on board, wow. email, um, create the shifts, assign the shifts, finagle the shifts once mm-hmm. people start giving us their feedback, things like that. It It is it is a lot of work. Um, it's like a second almost full time job. <laughs> well, like I told you, I had a whole new respect for what you do, even in the minor role I had in the Great Media Comic Con, because <laughs> it's a lot of fucking work to put on it is. It a is show. A lot of work. You know? And it it's not the same as, you know, like a wrestling event, a con, you know, something like a convention in that in that aspect I feel is very similar to each other. In the aspect of you have to corral all these different people 
Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. To get in the right place at the right time and hope that everything goes off without a hitch. You know, yeah, and, and we do have a lot of it, it never does, it never goes off without a hitch. It's a, it's always a hot mess, but it's the most oh, hot, hot mess you've ever heard of in your life. Yeah, I mean, I was hoping to see you guys and Frank in Pennsylvania when I was there in mm-hmm. May, but I'm hoping that you guys are able to swing by this coming year when we come back. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. I'll be there. Yeah. To make it out to one of those in Boston. And what are you, in Massachusetts or Rhode Island? Well, I live in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. However, oh, okay. <laughs> conventions <laughs> are in um, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Colorado Springs, Colorado. Where about in okay. PA is it? Because it's a very big state. I was looking for a park. Same, um, yeah. And it ended same up in place Erie. where, where um, Greater Philly was. Oh, okay. Um, oh. Oaks, I Oaks. think it is. Oaks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Which one is it? Right where... Uh, Metropolis, uh, Pennsylvania. It was our first year this past May. Awesome. Okay. Well, it's our I'll first year doing that show. And when, what date, uh, yeah. what, what's the date of the show? Um, this past year, it was the same weekend of Free Comic Book Day, but I believe they're moving it out a week. Mm, it'll be the smart. second weekend of May to coincide with uh, Mother's Day. Awesome. It'll be your Mother's Day gift. Me and Frank will come up. Yeah. That is my Mother's Day gift to me. I spend every other day with my kids. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you okay. Just, let me just say that I do love my children very much, and I spend a lot of time with them. It's not like a nine, sure. sure. not like sure. a nine, an eighties or a nineties mother's love. It's a you know you're a new a new age mom's love. You know, <laughs> there's the internet involved. You have more connection with your kids than I ever did with my mom or ever wanted. I my, <laughs> my kids and I spend a lot of time together, and we have a great time, and we all love each other very much. Yeah. However, conventions are mommy's thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's mommy time. Uh, yeah. yeah mommy. Sure. Absolutely. You need your own time, man. You do. You need your own time to yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but ultimately, you know, a nice sense of where we're all at. I like to start off the podcast with that before we get to the doom and gloom of the first story I added in the <laughs> chat for you guys, which is, uh, Arlene Sorkin, man, <clears throat> original voice of Harley Quinn, uh, dead at 67, which is way too young, man. Way too yeah. young. It's a, that's a bit young. Yeah. So evidently the live action Harley Quinn casting that some fans wanted would not have worked out. I hate to go to that dark humor place, but it's where I Well, am, so. the it would have been great for her to play the um Oh gosh. Now I can't remember. The the old Harley with the 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 twin granddaughters or the triple oh, granddaughters. Mm-hmm. Was that Batman Beyond? No, that's not Batman. What was the name of that film? Um, oh, damn it. I know it, Frank. I know it. I just can't think of it right now. Or Batman is old. Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond. Is it Batman Beyond? Was that a film or was that a TV series? They had a series. It was a film. It was a uh, Return of the Joker. Right. Yeah. And I think that's... Did she show up in Return of the Joker? It's been a while since I watched it. Well, there's an old lady in a wheelchair... Mm-hmm. That's, that's her, like yeah. the triplet girls, and it's in, inferred that it's Harley. So, like, she could have done that. I think that would have been pretty. But ultimately, pretty cool right. if you look in the grand scope of your life, and you have literally been the very first voice for <laughs> a character that was specifically created for this Batman Kids cartoon show. That one episode absolutely exploded into a pop culture phenomenon. She has movies, TV series, animated wise, comic wise. She's yeah. Harley Quinn season four is is coming, and they're talking about Nightwing's butt. You know what I mean? Harley Quinn mm-hmm. has exploded because she sold the voice of Harley Quinn yeah. completely yeah, and- from Harley to you know. Harleen Quinzel. She had a s- distinct two voices between the two. She had a s- distinct two per- personalities. And that is what I think ultimately culminates to what moves the character forward now. It's not just a strong, psychotic female character, you know. And I can't think of another character in modern comic history that's blown up in the same way that Harley has. No, none. Um, so, none. So, Pretty iconic character. 
it started off with a big bucket to win, and you know, even though it was cut short, I think ultimately you gotta you gotta acknowledge greatness like that. You know, we at first yeah. The other thing that surprised me is that she's married to Christopher Lloyd. When did I miss that? Wow, really? Yeah, Holy I think shit. Hold on, let me Google that real quick. Because, I don't but care. I, I'm I, running with it either way. No, I'm pretty sure I'm right because it said have, it in the. Don't fact check it. Don't pop that bubble for me. I love no, that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I love that relationship, right? Already, Doc. Yes, she's. Uh, she was married to Christopher Lloyd since no 1995. Fucking shit, Harley yeah. Quinn and wow. Doc Brown were yeah. married. Mm -hmm. Holy fuck. That is awesome. Christopher Lloyd. Good job, brother. You went to you went to heaven with a smile on your face. Oh, but I have to do a caveat now. Okay. Not that Christopher Lloyd. Oh, I like that Christopher Lloyd so much better. <laughs> this one's an American television producer. Cause I'm oh, like, wait, that's that not guy. Christopher Lloyd. Fuck that guy. I like <laughs> Doc Brown. And Harley <laughs> Quinn still. <laughs> that is so much better. Way more creepy. Way yeah, that was creepy. very, very, that was very like, what? And now it's like, oh. Once you he made realize, Modern Family. Ooh, once you realize that age difference. Yeah, no, that other Christopher Lloyd probably not much of an age gap, I imagine. So he did Frasier and Modern Family. So he's oh, okay. respectable in his own right. All right. So but just not that Christopher Lloyd. So sorry about that. Sorry oh, for getting really excited for no reason. It still may be the title of the podcast. Just not that. <laughs> yeah. Christopher not Lloyd. that Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> so. Ultimately, we got to go on to the next one because I think it's a really big talking point. And it's uh, the next two stories I sent you are kind of, I feel, linked. And it's the state of TV first and then movies uh, and where we're at. Because traditional TV viewership falls below 50% for the first time in the Nielsen report. So... Uh, Networks scored just 20% of overall viewership, while cable scored 29.6, meaning linear TV came in at overall 49.6 overall. So where is all that other shit? It's Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, not Paramount, not Peacock, because you don't have anything that anybody cares about besides one or two shows. Hello? <laughs> Those are just my opinions and not the opinions of the podcast. So how do you guys feel? I mean, I'm part of that demographic, so I really can't say anything. Uh, uh, same here. Absolutely. Uh, are but you, I grew up with the TV. Yeah. And that's where we're all kind of coming from. We are the right. last generation we. of the traditional TV drug, right? And now they... It's like crack. It's like freebasing crack now, man. It's right in <laughs> your veins. Well, I'll watch Tubi TV and Pluto TV. Mm -hmm. But you have nostalgia. And that's for more nostalgia than anything else. But I did watch the entire Highlander series. That was so I want to say on Tubi oh TV Highlander. with the commercials. It was such a good show. It's but so even good. then, it's different than watching something on regular television because... Yeah. I'm choosing what to watch and continuing to watch in the snow. So like one episode and then I have to wait until next week to watch it. We've become very spoiled. And the algorithm yeah. is choosing what advertisements you see based on you and the people around you or your cell phone. So it's a lot more oh. ad specific. My FBI agent must be hard of hearing because some of these commercials ain't got nothing to do with me. Well, no, that's why I say it's the people around you. Like, if I see an advertisement for Raymore and Flanagan, you know who was looking up Raymore and Flanagan? It wasn't this guy. It was Big Brother because it's what he does for his job. <laughs> so I will see all these different advertisements, and then I'm around a vast different culture of people, and he'll get, like, I don't know, what was it, Mexican ad, Mexican music yeah, advertisement? Mexican ad. He'll get Mexican advertisements <laughs> and like his podcast and stuff. It's it, it is real. Like that we have completely separate occupations, you know? And I will see like home goods, linens. I will see all this homely fucking advertisements and it's just like you two are around each other a lot. He's around these people. Here, here's some advertisements around that. It's very well, creepy. Frank, what kind of ads are you getting? <laughs> Or do you not want to share? I don't want to share. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I mean, that's the thing. I told you the 
ads are very specific. Like, think of I you just mentioned something to really? your spouse or your kid or so, your best friend, and you say, "Man, I really like this." It pops up on your phone. You not wanting to share is very intriguing to me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, you know, it's it's mostly like you know, uh, like furniture stuff, mm-hmm. you know, so. Furniture stuff, eh? That's the thing. Furniture is a very, I feel, vague advertisement, but it's still very specific because of the furniture they have in that commercial can trigger something that you were just talking about. That's where it that algorithm comes in. Oh, you guys, anybody watching the show <laughs> is going to fucking get pelted with furniture ads. I am so sorry. We'll move on from furniture. You go back to TV. <laughs> fucking. But you have Disney coming out with Ahsoka. You have Netflix coming out with One yeah. Piece. You have all these different streaming platforms going to nerd, uh, nerdy realms where, you know, me and Frank in like 10 years are going to be talking to these guys like, hey. Animation first, then we'll go to live action if it's good. You know, we'll have our terms. But ultimately, that's the that's, that's the realm we're at. That they are looking for new content, like yeah. mm, the Just don't let your live action ruin your anime. Oh, not if I have anything to say about it. Kariba the Hunted anime is going to be the best fucking anime ever. I have so much knowledge in that department. Call me. You're you're make you're making my heart like really like flutter, you know. I'm telling you, it's the perfect. Really, really Karibe, I, I would watch a Karibe anime. Oh my god, that is the perfect art style, especially for you. You yourself have a very traditional, like Japanese art style about the way you draw. Okay. At least well, um, from some of the por- at- some of the pieces okay. that you've made, like on Big T right. Graphics' site, that one, you know what I'm talking about. It was, um, it's on, it, yeah, it was on the main site a while ago, or whatever you had your page, uh, your pictures on the uh, the cover. Yeah, oh, no, uh, it was like a it was like a more Japanese style artwork. Oh, the uh, yeah, that that's a that was a pinup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Like, you That's, can do uh, he's, artwork like that. That's where I can see your yeah. idea going into something like that because you can still see the, almost like that Star Wars samurai connection. You know what I mean? In that kind of uh, respect. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was oh, a big I anime. About it. I know. I, I mean, uh, I was a big anime back in the uh, the late 80s when it was what, what they considered it violent, you know, which oh, was yeah. like, so intriguing. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, I would love to see um, some of the animations, like you know, uh, that they have on uh, what's it called, um, Love, Death, and Rockets. Oh yeah, no, Love, Death, Love, Death, and, Death, and, Death and Robots. 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 Oh, yeah. Robots. I said robots. Yeah. Love, Jeez. Death, and Robots. <laughs> Do you have that uh, uh, language disease where you hit your head and you can all of a sudden talk like a no. Japanese woman? When when I'm tired, you like I default to Portuguese and I forget all sorts of pronunciations in English words. So that's true. I forgot your. We're gonna have fun. Well, right. you you've seen that already, so you you know. You know, we made fun of you so much for you flubbing on words, but you're like <laughs> out of Triforce history. You're, you're like scant few that actually is bilingual. Okay, like I I I'm I'm just gonna formally apologize for all of uh, us white people it's on all the good. Triforce. That completely made fun of me because, oh, you know too many words. Like, yeah, that was kind of condescending. And uh, yeah, um, accent, I, you know, I have, I get made fun of for my accent quite a bit, which I don't think I have one, but I do tend to over enunciate words because I tried so hard to lose my my uh, accent as a child that I would force myself to say like the complete words. So now, when people say words in more of a slangy way, I still say it like very properly and it makes me sound pretentious and i'm not trying to be so i think like, that's projection you know what i mean i don't hear, don't even i don't hear pretentious when you speak i don't i don't know yeah. 
I don't hear that at all. Yeah. It's just like me putting it on myself, but it's not like me trying to be like, oh, I know how to say this big word. I it's hear just more that- pretentiousness out of my dog when he barks at the other dogs out the window <laughs> than I hear from you. Dogs are pretentious little shits, for Especially sure. Especially Link. Oh, my God. And cats God. are condescending as fuck. Oh, the whole oh. animal kingdom is rife with assholes. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> if you look at the grand scope, it's just life in general or just a bunch of dickheads. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we got Comment. way off track. So TV does that to you. But what can we do for movies? Because AMC stock tumbles to the lowest since the height of the pandemic, which I don't feel bad for AMC. What has been released that you have actually mm-hmm. wanted to go out and see? The last one I saw was the, the Demeter. I saw that one. That was in a theater. That was actually interesting. I actually liked it. Um, was it in a big screen? The Demeter. Uh, the, De- the Demeter. The 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 history oh, of the, the last voyage of the Demeter. I think it's something like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. I enjoyed that so much in a theater. But then again, you know, I like the theater, but it was pretty. It was pretty empty. Look, I uh, unfortunately. Here's the thing. It's just I, I appreciate the theater experience, but I feel, especially with the stuff that I've I've gotten excited for, and even in you know past podcasts, and oh my god, I can't wait to see this. But guess what? I can because I pay for streaming <laughs> services. And, and, and you want me to pay more money when I'm going to pay you for this content later? I I already pay you for this, man. Would you, ch- yeah. charge me more and then let me watch it because I have a VIP pass or something or however you want to justify it. I would go that route over going to the theater because it's not just my introvertedness. I will go out. I want to go see Oppenheimer. That is one I would like to experience in the theater. But I, for me, in the past I had my contacts on, but... I want to experience it like a 3D experience, or even if we had like 4D, I think there's one up in KOP, but a yeah. 4D or 3D experience, that is watching a film to me now, to where it's not something I can get at home. I'm not going to pay, you know, for a meta or something like that and watch a movie in 3D and all that. No, but I will go pay for it, you know, a ticket that may be more than a traditional theater. And I okay. have that experience because they are intending the way they film for 3d now not that afterthought like they did with so many movies in the past once they got the technology to where that is where if you want the film industry to survive it's not food and drinks that's like adding food and drinks to a comedy show it's a lot of distractions i feel that if you want to do that experience give them that extra sense give that give them that extra thing they can't get at home because anything we would get now is more expensive. That was the whole point of going to a theater. Yeah. You know, I mean, and maybe it's just me ranting, but I feel that is what I have found. What do I want to experience? Like Oppenheimer? Yeah, I want to experience that in 3D. Because it's, you know, it's it's toppling Barbie from the last projections I saw on the box office. Finally top of Barbie. Right. And that's the sign of a true film when you're this far out in the release when you have that starting pole positions at the same point when you're still when you're pulling ahead of you know the fashionable thing yeah now let me see that in 3d i'll check that out and i won't have to pay like those expensive prices i'll I'll see it matinee well i saw spider-man across the spider-verse and transformers rise of the beats in the theater but i saw them both as matinees i haven't Mm -hmm. gone to like an opening night in yeah. a very, very long time. And that used to be something. The midnight showing of cert, of specific movies used to be, like, what it was all about. Do they even do yeah. midnight showings anymore? Besides, like, those, uh, I don't, like, I don't even know. Theaters? I'll be honest with you. I don't I don't even know if they do. But now it's, like, 7 p.m. It's not even midnight anymore. And I'm not talking about Rocky Horror Picture Show, okay? No. That's, like, a whole <laughs> cult of, you know, weirdos that will just swarm <laughs> a theater, stand in front of the show, like... Wait, I get it. It's a whole other experience, but it wasn't even Dang, that really they gotta good be of a movie. Weirdos. It, 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 oh, right. well, I feel and maybe I'm alone, but I really don't think it was that good of a movie. I've never watched the like. I've watched the whole thing, 
but it's been like, all right, I've had enough. And then you see it on TV. Oh, this is when I stopped. All right, I've had enough. You know, it was one of those when you had nothing else to watch or nothing else to do. Right. You know, it was, it was, Uh, yeah. I think those are a thing of the past, so you know. I think uh, that old COVID and stuff like that and safety, uh, but it was a thing, you know. So, I mean, do you, I, I'll I'll always remember it. What What would bring your butt out to the seat? Is it the content, or is it more the experience? Like I'm siding with. Like, is it? I feel like some people will still side with. No, I want to see this content because. Either, whether it be traditionalism or even just wanting movies to survive. There's plenty of people who love films and they want right. this to continue. Right. Um, I would. I like going to a really good, scary movie. That is the experience. Um, it's hard to get it on like a, a, a small screen on your TV. You can, depending on how, you know, if it's really big. But in a theater with that, surround sound and uh it, it has an effect um that's what i enjoy um so watching the way of water and avatar in 3d with the glasses mm. was it um i don't know uh you gotta scare the crap out of me or you i'm gonna allow you to try <laughs> uh, i'm sorry kank frank uh kank um i'm sorry i'm sorry frank big brother are you call them what now big what brother you have a there, was a, there was a game that's very popular that just released and it's starfield if you're an xbox game pass uh uh subscriber you can now play one of bethesda's biggest games right now and if you yeah, heard you do also you do also have to buy it, it well, you, you, you have to buy it too and then you get early access to like you know a week or so earlier so the sound of starfield <laughs> almost having like an imax because it's voice activated it just completely canceled you out so I was wondering because I can still hear that like mm-hmm. that that rushing ear noise. Yeah, it makes yeah. you sound very far away. So I thought that was that thing. Remember when I told you I kept on hearing what sounded like the radio, and you were like, "No, there's something going." Oh no, that was that but was, it is that that was Big Brother. I figured that out once you said that just now, and that was actually my fan because I was keeping myself cool. We oh. actually Big Brother and myself for the past like eh, I'd say comfortably three years. We have not used our air conditioning units, and we got box fans for the windows. In intake, outtake, you get it, you know, have the right side of the house coming in at the right time of the day. Everything's fine. And overall, it's like old school 1980s style over here, bro, and we use fans. We love fans. That's also why Chris has not been over here in three years. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the podcast he started going virtual like as soon as he could with covid and he was just like no nah, we'll just go virtual we'll just go virtual <laughs> i have climate control no 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 i have central air i'm fine no no no. i don't have to go over there yeah i'm not gonna lie to you i probably would have made the same choice <laughs> chris chris forced this whole uh, po- zoom podcasting on me because he didn't want to be in the same house he was like oh my god it's hot by the end of the podcast he was glistening like an angel <laughs> and i feel that added to the charm okay i mean yeah you know is that you uh, cut, you, you, um, it may be you frank you cut out again i did okay yeah the next story <laughs> i wanted to hit is marvel i saw a rumor which I was really happy with. The rumor was that Marvel is developing five new specials uh, that are going into pre-production stage once the writer's strike is over. And the specials are Ghost Rider, Mephisto, Silver Surfer, Nova, and Sentry. I like this lineup, especially once 
I saw Werewolf by uh, Night, I was really oh. sold on the special and how you can introduce these characters. It doesn't have to be a long series. It doesn't have to be a long movie. This is Marvel finding their stride because it's almost like the made-for-TV movie. Filling out time gaps from TV series you want to do, like Loki Season 2. Um, there was another one I, I saw that was getting uh, Season 2. I'm brain farting on. But you can have that Season 2 that you want to do for the next season, filling out your overall idea to get to these movies that we want to see and these intellectual properties that are the main things that will draw people out to the theaters. That's my overall right. thought is that this is the best idea for that. Now, coming off the writer's strike, it's a big topic right now because you got to pay them, people, if you want this quality. That's also yeah. a thing that I think a lot of people are keying into now, which they call superhero fatigue, which is really lazy writing. And I watched The Flash. As much as I enjoyed the fan service, cameos, how they – really tried like you had an electrical cord that was just an inch too short and you were moving tables and chairs to get that thing to connect mm, to make it a flashpoint movie they really tried but at the same point you tried so hard to do lazy writing to fit into this specific space when you should have just did your own thing and I feel like they were trying to scratch too many people's backs, which was the problem with the last regime. And I feel that's also leading out to DC's downfall right now that we're still seeing. This ever swirl is they wanted. And me and Kat said a long time ago in Triforce, it is a bad idea to keep going forward with all of these movies. It's not that we didn't want to see Aquaman Lost Kingdom. It's not that we didn't want to see Blue Beetle or Flash or any of these. Yes, we wanted to, but... We both said, I would be a lot happier if you just hit that restart button and did your own idea and not drag over these horror, you know, these unfinished ideas. Because Blue Beetle, guess what? It did not do well. So now that's Oof. three movies that have clunked that you wanted to save and you scrapped one that was like, what was it, 85 million? It's not Oof. looking good. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Like in Flash, just barely. Like you're talking about maybe like, I think it was like maybe a couple tens of thousands off from what they made it, from what they got back at the global box office. Just about broke even. But that doesn't take into account, uh, my coworker Ian point out, how much they've spent in advertising. That was a loss. A good loss, but, you know... We'll talk about more about that loss later on. That's actually the last story that uh, I really want to cover, but we'll go into DC more Marvel-wise. I feel like they noticed that lazy writing, and they're like, oh, we got to drop all these plans of TV series that we want to do. Why don't we do specials? You got 90 minutes? I'll give you 90 minutes with Ghost Rider. I'll take 90 minutes with Mephesto. Especially after sure. the uh, uh, Agatha uh, show, uh, the Coven of Chaos that's coming mm -hmm. out. That's going to yeah. be a series, and that's going to be great. They have new characters that aren't tied to the comics in that. So <laughs> there's a lot that they can do with the series, but also this is a bit, even though it's a rumor right now, even if the characters change, we know they want to do Midnight Sun, so you know you're going to get a Ghost Rider. Mephesto fans have been clamoring for for a while because they're going, they've been in that spiritual world. The last three... I find very interesting because Silver Surfer kind of speaks to the Fantastic Four and where they want to go with that. Now, if they release like the Fantastic, uh, the Silver Surfer special before the fan just before the Fantastic Four, that could lead off to hey, we're not doing an origin, we're just getting into Galactus, and that could be exciting. Past time, past time. You know, I mean, I think we're past I love time. That. Of origin stories, too. Yeah, to see, you know, I mean, there's just so much that's just getting yeah. squandered, you know, just like, you know, I'm, I'm like aching for it, but that, you know, I, I still don't see anything of 
any kind of merit, you know, to really want to go out there and see, you, honestly. And that's where I think, you know, Marvel, they have, with Kevin Feige, he, I think he's a lot more liberal with the ideas and from writing to creative finish stage. That's what I'd like to believe. But with this, I see it as a course correction. And that's learning from your past mistakes. Werewolf had no reason to be that good. It can now be a Halloween staple that you watch every year. And yeah. it ties into, you know, uh, uh, what was it? Man thing. It ties into Moon Knight. It ties into Midnight Suns. It ties into so many different things that you want to see. Now you can also just have that as a special. Like the next one in that horror series, Ghost Rider. Perfect. Get your Ghost Rider. Yeah. Get him in there. Silver Surfer, same kind of thing with Fantastic Four leading into that. Doctor Strange's movie has been moved up, hence the Mephesto. I see that in there. Now, Nova, that's just a good choice. They've been, they should have, they should honestly do the Nova one first because you've alluded to no, the Nova character. You had the Nova core. You had uh, uh, so many Easter eggs of Nova in there, but nothing. Give me Nova. And Sentry, I mean, I just think it would be really ironic if they got Henry Cavill. You know what I'm saying? We'll take yes. him, Superman, and we'll make him better. Hmm. <laughs> I would like, that, would, that would really <laughs> feel personal. That would really feel personal to me because it's oh, like you had him. It would. And you had him. You had the it. best man for the job, and you squandered it. But I yeah. still feel like that's the perfect casting. No, I agree. Like I said, they had they had the perfect Superman. They did. Yeah. And they fucked it up. They did. They did. They did. But overall, what's a character that we haven't talked about that you would like to see get a special series in the future? Oh. Um, good question. Uh, I got mine. Gambit. What? Is Give me an or any kind of X Men that you want to do. I like Gambit for a single series, or a Wolverine Hulk, just special. I would like a Gambit Rogue. Him. Ooh, Gambit Rogue. Oh yeah. Or, yeah. or a Colossus and Kitty Pride. Give me one of the romances. Okay. I don't show. Okay. The Colossus King Pride is a little uh, sus. Why is that one sus? Don't ruin it for he me. He was very, very much older than her. It was kind of. I'm going to Google that right now. You can. It was, <laughs> he was older. He was a little older, yeah. I mean, you know, if if she was eighteen, I feel like a lot less people would have problems if that's when their wait, uh, wait. relationships. Listen, started. as a kid, when I read it, I'm looking at that. I bet not. <laughs> Nobody saw Red and Stimpy as sexualized. Mm. Uh. Okay, so Colossus's age. Wait, Colossus's age is given in the comics as eighteen during nineteen eighty two. He is about five years her beloved's junior. They're five years apart. I mean, being eighteen, that's still I don't race. He's legal, legal age. Little predator robbing yeah. the cradle. And 18, that's a freshman dating a senior. Like, I get what you're saying, but I, as a freshman, dated seniors. Fair enough. But that was the life that's realization what? of the X-Men as well. It talked to real life people. <laughs> I wasn't dating fucking seniors as a goddamn freshman. I wouldn't know that shit. You, th you look at this face. You think this face got seniors? Fuck no. I don't know. I don't know what you got. I wasn't you got, there. You got seniors to laugh at, maybe, but no, <laughs> nah, nobody was like, oh, I want to take it. I don't know why your voice is all high pitched right now. I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> it was not unusual for a freshman to date a senior. A little racy team. Hey, was was it right? I don't know. <laughs> well, anything's possible. Um, last thing I did want to end on good old fashioned top 10 because we mentioned a flash <clears throat> and Warner Brothers. 
uh, just expertly timed. Also added, uh, like many other people have had for a while, a top 10 list feature. So, uh, like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, they have a top 10 list. And uh, would you guess who made it to the top of that brand new top 10 list? Huh, it's the fly. Top 10 what? Top 10 HBO Max. I oh. didn't say HBO oh. Max, but yeah, their, their streaming service, Max, not HBO Max anymore. It's like a dog. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they now have I'm not everybody surprised. else has. But didn't I tell you that? I told you that no one was going to go see it in the theater because of the controversy. But once they're in you the did. privacy of their homes and nobody's like specifically knowing who's putting their money on it, that those numbers were going to go up. I wanted to believe that a lot more people were like me and you just didn't want to spend the money. But uh, like in general, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I'd like to believe it's a mixture of both now, but probably overall, I enjoyed it because I didn't have to spend any extra money on it. I got to see Michael Keaton as Batman for one last time. It's what I wanted. You know, I mean, it had enough interesting parts in the story. It just felt like a potluck. It didn't feel like yeah. an original idea. I enjoyed I enjoyed that Batman the the fight scenes it just oh my god it was nice yeah. oh those fight yeah. scenes were fucking dope like that's the thing yeah. I enjoyed way too much about this to call it a shitty movie yeah. and it was Andy yeah. Machete so there was way too much good in it but overall yeah I feel like it was Andy Machete with his hands tied behind his back it, there were some things that were just like not really popping for me but. Well, um, you can't uh, have Wonder Woman. You can't have Aquaman, yeah. and uh, no, you can't have Cyborg. Can't have all these people that were involved in the comic. No, 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 no. Now, uh, make a good right. movie, like right. Well, it can be done. It can be done, but you know, you really well, it could have been not better. But you hinder you hinder somebody. But the thing is, you know, you really want uh, uh, these other things that you pull into it that actually connects one to another, and you, you'd want to see anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, the little cameos are nice, but you might as well not have done it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I really appreciated the George Reeves, the, the, you know, Adam West, the, you know, the Christopher Reeves, all the different, the fucking Nicolas Cage cameo was great. Um, Just like, you know, the end. But they even mentioned, hey, we have originally had another ending that had Flash rebooting this new universe. And of course, after a couple felonies, you can't do that. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Can you believe that guy? Can you believe that? Somebody's guy? window of their own home and people freak out. Choke a bitch once, you know? I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> But overall, yeah, you can't do that. You're handing the keys to the kid, no. and all of a sudden, you know, this guy just, you know, takes a dive, you know, and just acts like a complete idiot. You know, it's like I can't believe that. Unhinged, handed a career yeah. on a silver platter, a silver platter. blowing up, blowing yeah. up with major roles in huge franchises, and he does because after, after Zack Snyder, uh, after Zack Snyder's director's cut people like flash mm -hmm. but then all these stories came out of these people who interacted with him they're like hey you shouldn't like him look what he did and you're like oh my god he burnt down that whole mm -hmm. park like in that kind of a amazement you know not that he literally did that god that would be horrible but overall that's Ultimately, where I think that DC should listen to the fans for once. And fans are really leaning into Grant Gustin uh, being the Flash for the Matt Reeves Batman universe in the Batman 2. I mean, I don't overall feel like we need to introduce the Flash that quickly like Batman 2. But overall, if you're going to keep that as an Elseworld Batman, okay. I mean, why not? It would be a nice little, you know fun movie later on especially if you do like that batman doing like a uh doomsday clock i would love those two as flash and batman and doomsday clock it would be great but overall i just i don't know man uh the flash top at number one doesn't really seem big to me but I, some of the other choices i don't know maybe some people will find interesting as well number two 
BS High, an eye-opening documentary, chronicles the Bishop's uh, Sycamore High School football scandal and the team's infamous head coach, Roy Johnson. I don't know, but something about that uh, description really makes me feel like somebody got touched. (laughs) Maybe a lot of people. I don't know. I mean, you wouldn't just make a documentary (laughs) on one guy getting touched. Otherwise, the Catholic Church would not be a thing. Oh, my God. (laughs) You guys remember who I am? Hi. I'm the Matt Man. <laughs> People at work are learning who I am now. Oh, boy. I made a joke <laughs> of this very, very American guy. Like, we have you can we have seats, we have a walkway, and then there's this sta- standing bench. Well, like, you know, desk. We got people standing at the walkway, and this guy was, like, rubbing his belly on the other guy to s- skate by. And as he's he walks out out of earshot, and I say to him, "You know, I'm really surprised COVID didn't take that one." And everyone <laughs> looked at me like I just shit in their mouth. <laughs> uh, you know, there is an appreciation for dark humor. Okay, when somebody is like, "Look, this guy is smoking two packs a day," somehow COVID right didn't find him. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's something, it's something like that. But that aside, I do have a little bit of dark humor. Um, so that, okay. that's what I got from number two on the list. After number one, I mean, it can only get better from here, right? <laughs> number three, get hard. I mean, mm. It can't get better than this. Financially frustrated Will Ferrell. That's where it gets better. See? The humor uh, 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 comes out. Uh, Will Ferrell hires, hires Kevin Hart to coach him on prison life as his sentence approaches. So that seems like a, you know, comedy buddy cop. Will Ferrell, Kevin Hart. Yeah, that's why they went with that title. That's going to get you to click. I mean, I can see that as a number three, especially as Will Ferrell. He's generally always funny. And Kevin Hart's, you know, golden. Number four was surprising. Twister. The, you know the, those storm chasing scientists? The Helen Hunt? Oh, yes. Helen Hunt's. Oh. Helen Hunt's uh, Twister. That's number four. Yeah. And that's what these people are yeah. desperately searching for to find anything entertaining on Max. That's what yeah. I got so far. <laughs> <laughs> I can list off. Five shows right now I watched on Netflix that are so much better than any of these. But, you know, I mean, you got to get what you pay for. And some people are paying for this. So maybe you guys are going to be like, you know what? I pay for it. I like that movie. I'm going to get something out of this subscription. That's the point of this list. Because number five is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Which I will say, I watched the first one in that series. But I haven't gone through that. Uh, all of those movies. Like, because you've seen the tradition, you know, the classic ones and all that. Right. But there's something about those Dawn of the... Uh, there was somebody, I forget who who did those movies. He's still doing great movies now. I don't know, but those movies, it had the right amount of CGI to where it was that perfect right. kind of golden technological time. You could get the hair passable enough. Um, right. And you didn't have to do so much props. Because mm-hmm. I think the first one had a lot more props with uh, Mark Wahlberg run. Like they had. Oh, that like, one. Yeah. They had Practically people still all- dressed yeah. up like all of that. And it was yeah. obviously very expensive because you have to pay for those people to yeah. put them in there. But, you know, with this net, this dawn and all that, uh, you know, rise of the planet of the apes and all that. Those movies, yeah, I'd watch that. That's when CGI was really starting to take off. People were like, "All right, this isn't a novelty. We can actually get some good stories out of this." So, it took it takes to number five for something kind of at least palatable, in my opinion. Yeah. So, number six is cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Never saw. That one makes sense. It's a well, decent movie. Kids, yeah. I mean, I, even I've watched Cl- Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs because you read the book. And the movie actually is better than the book. One of the only times you can say that. I mean, the book didn't really go into a lot of detail. But, you know, it was a good movie. 
So once again, five and six, it takes you to get to a real solid pick here on the list. And look, just like number seven, Avatar. Not Way of the Water, by the way, which I've seen that. Like, I know I can watch it, and I still don't. I don't have that much time to really dedicate to that movie. It's just like Dune. Like, dude, I gave you two chances, and I fell asleep both times. Like, I, I can't. I, I don't know. But that original Avatar, that was giving people, like, clinical depression. Like, there's something hilarious about that, that I really appreciate that movie. Because they were seeing, uh, they were upset that after seeing Pandora in 3D, they would never be able to experience anything so beautiful. And it set them into a spiral of depression. Like, that that movie, man, it was good. I didn't think it was really that good. But some people did. Some people did. So maybe you want to relive that panic attack. <laughs> American Gangster is number eight. A Harlem mobster combines his uh, ingenuity and strict business codes to dominate organized crime while a veteran cop searches for a way to bring him down. That was good. Fuck like every, you know, mobster cop thing ever, but I'm sure the story is amazing if it's num at number eight after those heavy hitters at five, six, and seven. I swear the bottom of the end of this list has been better than the top. Um, oh, man. Number nine, Miss Congeniality. A frumpy FBI agent undergoes a dramatic makeover when she goes undercover as a beauty pageant contestant, Sandra Bullock stars. This is like the, the horror version reading that you're doing right now. <laughs> I'm just reading the description on it. I just, I, it was. But the way that it. you're saying it. it, it was just like. Oh, my God, yeah. Like, an undercover crimes. FBI agent. <laughs> Like it should turn really dark with true life crime style. <laughs> yeah. The way he said it, it did. Little did Sandra know that this would be the last beauty pageant she would be attending. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I was forced to watch that movie. Um, it was passable. Um, but number 10, the whole reason why I clicked on this article, because how can you not love this movie? Number 10, people have been watching non-stop, on the max, not your dog, but HBO streaming service, is Spaceballs. To end Oof. off with Mel Brooks is Chef's Kiss. Um, you know, there's only so many Mel Brooks films that they have on there. We watched Young Frankenstein. They have, you know, I want, you, you, you got to go through the whole like he's one of those directors that you got to watch everything he did because as far nobody did comedy like Mel Brooks or has done now right which I, I i can't wait for history of the world part 2 i just hope it still has that sting that his old films did it has to have otherwise it's just you know um, it's just it was shocking at the time you know um this is uh, my shooting hand yeah, I mean, it's just like, if it's not, it just does it's not going to work. Like, they've gone plaid. There's just something about Mel Brooks films that, I mean, I will, I think that out of time, you can still appreciate that because my name is Diego Montoya. <laughs> Everyone watching just finished that statement. You know, Princess Bride, it's an amazing masterpiece. So it's just one of those things that we need more Mel Brooks and less, you know, Flash. You know, we, we need a return to the amazing comedy movie. Everyone knows you're joking. You can be dark. That's where I thrive. But no, I think maybe that's a way to sell a film. That's my overall maybe. purpose of uh, statement for this podcast. Dark humor <laughs> saves the world. There you go. I like it as an overall feel. Kat, how do you feel about this overall listing and uh, of uh, the maxes? Do you think uh, there's going to be a lot of changes? Because they don't really have a lot of good content. I feel like right now everybody's kind of jumping on that trend and we're going to be seeing a lot of new things come and go until they find their way. I think we're going to be having a lot of people combining kind of like Hulu does where you can get Hulu and then 
add on other things to it in the same way um like you can do disney and use pn as a bundle yeah combining forces um Mm -hmm. i think they have a better chance of succeeding in the long run but as to your point it's all going to depend on the content even with all of this content being put out it's finite and people are going to have to be making the decisions of is it worth it for me to pay let's say a hundred dollars a year to watch one or two shows and with them cracking down on people sharing passwords, I don't think that that's going to work for them in the way that they think it is. I think they're going to lose more people that way than allowing the sharing of streaming services. Well, where are you going to um, go? So I'm, I'm interested to see what happens because at the end of the day, like I can go to the free ones. I, I can happily, li- mm. I happily mm. lived without cable mm. for a very long time and I can happily live without cable for a very long time. Damn, see um, how quickly she put me in my place? I was like, where are you going to go? I go to the free services. Anywhere. And I'm like, Anywhere. like, fuck, she's right. Okay, never mind. I'll show you. Even like with that, with all of these free services and even just going back to people using antennas and stuff like that, I think mm-hmm. that that's kind of how, I think that's just like, this like weevil wobble that we're on right now. And yeah. that's, yes. that's going to happen and because it's. She it's did not much. say antenna. Yeah, she went back to those yeah. days. But it's a perfect analogy. You can still do that. You can literally still do that right now. Well, oh my god! It's also, I mean, the antenna looks different than well, it did yeah, back yeah. in our day because it's it's still different. Charm remembers, but it's still basically <laughs> the same concept. It's still digital, but it, it's yeah. They still give you that free and option. Yeah. Then maybe we'll see the rise of blockbusters again with people going out choosing movies. Like, how many of us burned CD uh, DVDs? Yeah, and have man. things on our hard drive and stuff. Oh, Napster. <laughs> and if I want to know what happens in a movie, hell, I can wiki it within a month of it coming out. So, like, <laughs> there are options. They don't have us in the chokehold that they think that they do. And I think that they're going to find that out that very shortly. That is a very, very good point. Because yeah. with the overall scope of the media, they want to put you in that bottleneck. And they want you to feel... No, you only have these options. And here comes Wonderful Woman like, ha ha, no, I have a lot. And that's a really fucking helpful you point do. for a lot of people. Look at those free, because even on the streaming apps, you're not getting a lot of commercials. Like a lot of people pay for music and all that. And I was like, oh, I just do YouTube because they let you skip after five seconds or you watch two ads and you barely notice them. And then you get your music you, you want to listen to. You know, and there's different options for that person that I don't know. I don't need that. No, I don't want that. Then there are those other options because there's all the also those um, examples of the streaming services taking their content and then releasing it on the cable platform. And it's still what people still watch. They still do. Oh, I saw that. No, I saw. Yeah, I saw that on TV. It was on channel such and such. It'll be the advent of people watching, like having watch parties again or yeah. borrowing each other's DVDs or purchasing things at FYE or on Amazon. I mean, there's so many options other than streaming services that yeah. like I, I'm a big Star Trek fan and, and you know that, mm-hmm. um, yeah. but I haven't had Paramount Plus in a while. So I haven't seen any of the new stuff. And you know what? I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, like, I'm, what? I'm okay. <laughs> that may be an option for us to delve into since we are talking about this and future ideas is that, you know what? Because I do have these services and maybe we do want to do a watch party to where we can have people join in and watch this, you know, this episode. Hey guys, we're doing the watch party on this. Get together. That's kind of cool. About it, commentate, listen, and all that. Hey, man, this is what we're doing. And now that gives everybody a bigger chance to actually get involved and see these shows. Because even to the point, I was talking with my coworker Ian, and he is a Star Wars nerd, but he doesn't want to pay for Disney Plus. His brothers change their passwords a lot, so he's just like, "Well, all I can do is ask." That is another option. For him to do because then be like hey man i'm doing a watch party on mandalorian this weekend dude we're doing all this and then you can watch hey man no they're what i'm watching mandalorian right now because phones have the ability to project what you're watching on that phone to your tv so all those people are like oh i can't watch on a phone there's a button right there 
and you can project oh. it to your team. So there's a lot of different options. I feel we're like really I flew evolving Southwest evolving here. I flew Southwest on the way to and from Colorado Springs, and you know they don't have the TVs on the seats like some of the airlines do, mm -hmm. but they do have free internet where you can. Um, it's a what? limited amount of things that you can watch. It's not like you're just on Wi-Fi and you can do whatever you want. You yeah. can go to their internet, and they have a series of TV shows and movies, and like you can listen to um, iTunes or something while you're on the plane. But what I did was I logged into my Disney account. I hadn't seen Secret Invasion. Mm -hmm. I downloaded all the episodes. I put my earbuds in and I watched them and I was a-okay. So that's also another option. If like my parents want to watch a show, I can log into my account there, download the episodes, boom, they can watch it whenever they want. It's it just, there are too many options out there for them to think that these stre streaming services are the be all end all and that they can yeah. just yeah, do whatever with, they want. Like you're saying with download, you download it, you put it on a thumb drive, you get to your friend here who's uh, season one, Amanda. Here's season two. Here's there Ahsoka. Here's all this stuff that you didn't. To where? Oh, mm -hmm. no password sharing. Okay, I'll. I have a PC. I have options. You know, I have a PC. Yeah, and I'm just gonna say this. I've said this before. I'm gonna say it again. If I'm paying for streaming services that allows for five logins at a time, okay. what the fuck do you care where those five logins are coming from? I'm paying for those logins. Yeah. I should right. be able to log in from Timbuktu if I freaking want to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And your business. Yeah. <laughs> who's it's paying all. you that's right i am. right yeah you right. work for me no I'm <laughs> right <laughs> so i get rabid about excuse it excuse me um, mr <laughs> officer you work for me like yeah, okay no. <laughs> fancy netflix man <laughs> <laughs> that, only, that only goes so far in both cases but yeah. overall i think we uh we have an overall really good mess uh message of different options and different uh, states of where we're at entertainment wise with this podcast ever evolving the matt and cat show is with our special guest one mr <laughs> frank percy um comic book artist extraordinaire and frank end of the podcast we want people to know where to find you where can they find you in the upcoming future upcoming future uh, i'm gonna be at um tattooed moms uh september 8th at a um, kind of tribute to Stephen King. Okay. So I'm going to have two pieces for art uh, for uh, auction or something like that. Um, September 8th in Tattooed Moms on South Street in Philadelphia. Awesome. So if you're in that area. Uh, the next two conventions is uh, the Blue Hen uh, Comic-Con and Toy Expo in Dover. Yeah. Um, that is... Uh, that was a big one when we uh, we went last year. It was a lot bigger than I thought it would be. It was very it's impressive. It's going to be bigger still. Yeah, this is going to be two days, 18th and 19th, Ooh. down in Dover in November. Oh, man. I can't wait to see how they expanded this year. They did such a good job yeah, last year. Uh, they, they, they've got a lot, of, a lot of really nice talent there, so I'm really looking forward to that. That's awesome. Um, then last, last of the uh, season is the Ocean City Comic Con. Um, December 9th at the convention center down there run by, uh, two great guys. Um, uh, Josh Shockley and James Dufonch. Um, they are both really, really bringing a huge comic con at the end of the season. So, you've been uh, going I'm going to be for a while now, man. You've been going to yeah, the, they're the great. Ocean city for a while. I'm glad that the Jersey, the country of Jersey has a great con like that. No, no, this is Ocean City, Maryland. Oh, Maryland. Oh, wrong Ocean City. Maryland. This is all the <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, they're part of the state, Jersey. so that's fine. Yeah. All the way down yeah. there. Um, so much, it's great. Makes sense. It's yeah, the rumors may be uh, it's going to get bigger next year. So, you know, uh, uh, each year it's always been a little bigger, mm -hmm. nicer, more crowds, uh, great people there. And uh, they, they, they graciously have me down there. I mean, they're super, super nice. And Ocean City, Maryland is so Oh, you know, I hear Jersey. Oaks, Pennsylvania is really nice around it May. It is. And that's where we're going to have to stop and visit a wonderful woman. Put me there. I will be there. Did you say? Put them there. Put me there. I'll be there. I got that on recording, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's on. It's I'll in print. There. There you go. It's in print. One Frank Percy. There you go. To Oaks there you go. In uh, Pennsylvania as well. So we're loading up next be... year as well, gang. Hey, we're loading that out. You know, so, hey. 
But overall, I think we did a really, uh, really great thing <laughs> for the public this week and showing them their options and letting them know that perjangers are just going to perjang. And yeah, and there's also coloring and reading too. <laughs> there is coloring and reading <laughs> and writing and arithmetic for those who Correct. are interested. Correct. Don't forget your social games. studies. Board games. <laughs> D&D <laughs> campaigns are highly entertaining. <laughs> Card games, D&D, there's mm -hmm. so many mm -hmm. options. But a lot like the option of seeing okay. us next week, gang, because this is the Matt and Cat Show. I'm Matt, Matthew Buberell, the Matt Man, Katarina Thermoscara, our wonderful woman, one Frank, one Punch Percy, our special guest, and always welcome back. We will see <laughs> you next time we record, and until then, we love you. We miss you. We want to see you then. <laughs> Game on, boys and girls! Bye-bye! <laughs> <laughs>I actually comb my hair. What are you talking about? You know? I, <laughs> I did not. I did not comb my hair. My hair is in like a very sloppy braid. Oh, no. just, uh, well, now, we have, now we have a great end credit. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so this weekend at the um, at the convention, one of my friends was being pretty sassy, and I told him that if he kept on being, we were your hair we had gotten perfect, Frank. Your, your, your hair, hair looks, looks fantastic, Frank. Fantastic. You look fantastic, <laughs> Frank. Oh my god! I told you that in the beginning. I was like, "Hey, he's opting out. That's fine." I know how to do it? I, I mean, I'm like, like, oh, you hit the video button. It's, I thought it was on. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm technologically seriously challenged. Okay, you know, I did. press the wrong button. That's the end of the universe and shit uh -huh. like that. Without. A I did know that, but uh, I did know that about <laughs> you. But I was just like, for some reason, I was like. Eh, whatever. He doesn't want to opt in. He's still he's engaged. He's oh, all that. Oh, that's cool. Here I am, man. Oh my god, you people! You guys think I know what I'm doing? You know, you we're keep saying so, this because we're so understanding of people's, uh, you know, privacy. We're like, ah, oh, it's fine. He's, you know, it's really awesome conversations, and it was your normal artwork. So I was like, fuck, man, fuck it. It's all some artwork. I'm not Picasso. Please, I want to show my. How do they know who the hell I am? The guy who did the Punisher. There's nothing that has my face on it. Nothing. When they see me, they see Frank. They see the name Frank Percy. They keep walking, looking for the mother white guy. I go, no, it's me. You know. Now I'm um, gonna have to add Lord this part in the beginning Percy. of the show. <laughs> I know. Just what so happens know. is uh, when I'm covering for a break for well, actually, what happened on Saturday is one of our volunteers ended up. She had come from the East Coast. She's one of the sea level people. <laughs> Did not do great with the elevation. She had a migraine or whatever, and she couldn't come in on Saturday. So I covered her table and worked with her guest that day, who was the voice actor, Billy West. You know, Red okay. and Stippy, okay, a bunch yeah, of the yeah. Futurama characters. So sweet, sweet man. So behind us is his banner that's got his face on it, maybe from 20 years ago, but he doesn't look that, he just looks older, but it looks like, it still looks like him, and a bunch right. of the characters that he did, and then the prints on the table, like the first three or four also have his face on it, along with the character that he did the voice for, like Fry or whatever. So he went on a break. So he went to the green room to get something to eat, stretch his legs, what have you. And I'm sitting at the table and one of our security guys, this Hispanic male named Frank Gonzalez, comes and he sits next to me in the other empty chair. And we're talking about, you know, work stuff, the event, the lines, how there was like a drunk guy there earlier that we had to have security get rid of him, blah, 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 just kind of catching up with each other. And these people walk up to the table and they're like, oh, my God. You're like my favorite voice actor of all time. I love your stuff. And I'm looking at Frank. <laughs> and, it, and, and Frank hey, is yeah. like, should I just go along with it? I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Yes. 100% yes. They, they have no idea. No like, idea. You know, but, but the picture's there, which made it even 
funnier to me. Back, like, I get it if there was no picture. Back in the 90s. There was like seven pictures between the banner and the ones on the table. Back in the For 90s. them to be like, that's not a white guy. <laughs> that's not an old white guy. My dad would grow out a beard. And when he had his beard out, he would have people randomly come up to him thinking he was Stephen King. Like, oh my God, can I get your autograph? And be like, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and he would sign his name. Just hoping that they'd look at it and be like, who the fuck is this? But he looked like, <laughs> okay, you can have my autograph, sure. Uh, so one of my friends, he is mixed. His, his dad is black. His mom is Italian. So he's like mulatto. Or I'd, I'm not sure if they like that term. But you know what I mean? He's mixed between black and white. Yeah. And he was with the actor that played Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's at a convention. Okay. And these young kids came up to the table saying that it was their mom's favorite movie. And so the actor, which I'm sorry, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, starts talking like he's the handler and Tyrone is the actor. <laughs> and he even had them take a picture with these kids for their mom. Uh, uh, he's like, oh. just go along with it. Just go along with it. So these random teenagers took a picture with one of our staff members thinking that it was Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's. With the poster and the pictures on the goddamn table. And, you know, the guy, the actors, you know, like a little old white, white guy. And then you have a tall, clearly mixed. Uh, that's the guy from Weekend at Bernie's. That's the yeah. guy. I can't imagine them going home to their mom and being like, look, mom, we got a picture with this guy from Weekend at Bernie's. She's like, I have no idea who that man is. <laughs> who the fuck is that? Did you pay yeah, him? Pretty much, pretty much. I'm not sure if they did pay. I didn't ask him that oh, a while ago. Be, so I think that great. actor has passed since then, but yeah. Oh, that'd be so great. Oh, that'd be so great. Especially if you go like, oh, I got the last picture with him. Here he is. Here he is right there. I'm sorry, <laughs> man. That's, that's not the guy who played Bernie, man. I don't know how to tell you that. That guy was white. <laughs> yeah, Have white. A short, before? white, like chunky, older dude, and then a very tall, skinny... <laughs> Clearly not white guy. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. I didn't let me hit the button. I'm sorry. I didn't know if I thought it was filming. It's fine. You're I just, just couldn't see. Okay, we can tag this in at the end so everyone can see your hands. Oh, and oh I, I don't know where all this is going to come in, but it's all going to be in there. It's all going to be in there. 100%. 100%. 100%. This is the end of the show. Just got once again, the show kept getting better it's as it went along. Ending credit. It's the Jackie Chan bloopers and everything. You know? <laughs> People love end credits. So, hey, you know. We can do that. Oh, God. I love you both. This has been a great podcast. Right. We'll do it again. All right, guys. Bye. Oh, Frank, you're going to join us every week now? Uh, yeah, we could do that every once in a while. Sure. I mean, Until I'm at places. I'm at, I'm at places, you know. Um, oh, yeah, same thing with Kat. We take breaks yeah. when she has stuff to do. So. I, uh, I, I have a very aggressive day job and con job schedule. So she's a con you. woman. Yeah. She's a con artist. Yeah. yeah, and you're a con artist, literally. Just I'm just surrounded by con artists. Yeah, I know. All right. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. Love ya. Love okay. you. Too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>